It is, this is probably going to be the shortest newscast ever because we're in the middle of a construction battle zone here. So I'm going to have to, if it gets really loud, I'll have to play some really loud stuff. Who knows? That's Steve. I don't think so. Anyway, um, I'll go and run through a little bit of what we had this week. It's probably going to make it really fast, except you know what? No, there was a great documentary. Oh, it's January 31st, Friday. And we are still suffering in like unseasonably warm temperatures here in California. It is, um, well, I don't know. Hate to brag about it, but it's, it's not good. Uh, my lawn is brown because I decided it's time to turn off the sprinklers. It's time to use a lot less water. We are heading into a major drought here in California. So unlike much of the rest of the country. So um, let's see. We have, I'm going to talk about some cool songs. I'm going to talk about something exciting going on because February is a really important anniversary of something going on, of a huge musical milestone. I'm sure you guys have figured it out. Um, at least those in the United States. And uh, what else? And I'm gonna talk a little bit about camp because it's really cool seeing everybody that's signed up for, uh, for or that is threatening to come to the camp. Even though we have very few plans of it so far, I'll tell you, well, I guess I'll tell you right now since I started off on this tangent. Um, it's gonna be a day longer, so that's like a third longer, so it's probably gonna be about a third more. We'll figure out, we haven't quite dialed that in, but we are going to offer a discount to Target members and a little extra early bird special for a week or two or maybe even the whole month of February. We'll kind of see how it goes. So stay tuned because we hope to have that all in place by early next week, by the first week of February. Speaking of the first week of February, I found, you know what, I found, oh wait, let me go through some of the stuff that we did this week first. I'll make that really quick. We had some uh, cool tunes from a Doug and his buddies, Roger Mosier and Stu Frazier. I know. Unbelievable. And this week there will be a new. We'll, we'll have a new session. Um, I'm hoping to get up a little bit more of my. I gotta sort through my John Renborn stuff. I might have a little bit more of that floating around. Maybe even have a lot of the workshop. I'm not sure yet what kind of condition it's in. Um, I haven't had time to really dissect all of those videotapes as much as all of those old tapes. We're talking about tapes that are 15, 16 years old now. Um, and uh, let's see. I did want to talk about the Beatles though because I did find a the, one of the magazines I was missing. Track, somebody tracked it down for me. Really cool. And it's got acoustic arrangements of some of their songs. And like a lightning bolt, it hit me. I have dozens of Beatles arrangements. How many have I made lessons out of so far? One? I think. Isn't it this one? We haven't done stuff like... Um, for Beatles instrumentals. I might have to stop now, it's gonna get loud. So I'll play this loud. Very different character on my Beatles album. So I don't know. I gotta get it. I gotta. I gotta make some, make some plans for. Um, what? Let me try. I don't know. We'll see. 
Um, okay, I gotta get to the songs. What did we do this week? Oh, well, thank you, Vanessa, for staying up on the current music scene. We have I See Fire by Ed Sheeran, it was a new release. Uh, finally got Lynn's lesson together. Lynn's lesson was so long that it took me forever to like kind of sort through it and make sure that we edited out the uh, the times when she like swore swore at me and stuff like that. You know, and she got she got mad and stuff. No, 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 just kidding. Um, she just sent me a message today. If anybody happens to be near Washington D.C. on March 9th, get a hold of her. Dave Nachmanoff will be doing a house concert at Lynn's out there on the East Coast. Um, hope it's okay if I spill those beans, Lynn. <laughs> Anyway, in that lesson, we talked about two-part harmony. And then we talked about how it worked in Oh Come All Ye Faithful. Wrong key. Can't do it in G. lesson was spent talking about harmony, so good little theory touch talk, uh, talks in there. Then we had, oh, I gotta start playing louder again. Um, has anybody seen the movie yet? I keep meaning to. No, this is not Hallelujah, it sounds just like it, huh? Eight stuff. Starts. Whoa! Careful. See? Oh, you know what just knocked over? There's something else I meant to share with you. A real cool collector's item. I've been listening to old Beatles. Well, this is what's one of the things that spurred the whole Beatle renaissance. Well, that's not the word I'm looking for, but uh, rebirth in 1994. This nine disc set came out that was everything they recorded on the radio and TV from about 1962 to 64 when they stopped playing in TV studios. Anyway, Capital EMI got a, got wind of how how what this thing was selling like hotcakes, even though it was really expensive. And uh, they came out with Live at the BBC, and then they came out with the whole anthology series. So someday I'll talk more about this. But a lot of uh, of the rebirth of the Beatles in the, that started in the 90s was spurred on by this nine disc set the complete BBC sessions on a label called Great Dane Records that was put out legally in Italy and uh, consequently the laws, the copyright laws in Italy changed because of it. There was a law that said anything that was over 20 years old was public domain. So in 1994, 20 year old Beatles recordings that were really 30 years old were fair game. Anyway, okay, enough about the Beatles for today. Um, what else did we have? We also oh, fairly well that Dink song. That is something um, that I hope everybody enjoyed. Um, I, again, I hope I hope to get to see the movie sometime soon. But I'm already I've already saw two movies over the Christmas season. I, I do two like two a year, and they're always in December, so I'm over my quota, but um, or my limit. But uh, did I see two? Yeah, I saw the Halmana and Mr. Banks saving Mr. Banks. Um, so I can't really go to another movie till next Christmas vacation when my kids are back. That's my rule on going out to the movies. Um, Anyway, uh, what was I talking about? Inside Lewin Davis. Because it's about, it's based on the history of the folk music scene in New York in the, in the early 60s, when Bob Dylan was playing his version, and Dave Van Ronk was playing his. Well, Marcus Mumford and um, Oscar Isaac put together a great version of this tune. Now, I didn't even refer to some, I think I mentioned Fred Neal's version that I would think you should check out. That's on the, the same album as his first album. I think it was called Inside Fred Neal, maybe? Um, and uh, he just called it Fred's tune because he had a completely different chord progression, pretty different melody, um, but a lot of the same lyrics. Dylan's version, completely different too, as Jim pointed out, and I think, I, yes, I did slap up the video for that. Um, Speaking of Hallelujah, Jeff Buckley has a version that is way out there, kind of, kind of really gritty in, in E, I think. Maybe uh, it wasn't open E, but it was in it was in the key of E, and and uh, pretty a really biting arrangement. So check out um, Jeff Buckley's version of Dink's song as well. Uh, let's see, did we have another song? Oh, of course. <laughs> no wait. 
last week. Uh oh, it's getting too loud for me to play a quiet song. JJ Kale has just some great tunes. Um, Buddy Rich and, and I used to play a couple of his. We played the one called Sensitive Kind, another one called Hold On. Went something like that. Anyway, Rich is somebody that I recorded. Oh, I gotta get that video for you too. Anybody that has the obscure Neil Hogan album? Anyway, oh, that was only the second guitar part. But my friend Rich Olson, who uh, unfortunately passed away a few years ago, had, uh, luckily I got a couple of duets done with him, and uh, I was playing duets in, in little local coffee shops and stuff in the early 80s when I met my wife. She and some of her friends came out to see us, and the rest is history. I'll save that story for another day. But anyway, uh, did I talk about all the songs? I talked about Stu. Let's see. Okay, now the story on camp. Oh, I think I gave you the story on camp. Yes, it's going to run from Wednesday, September 17th. Plan on late afternoon, starting at 4 or 5 in the afternoon. Um, and then we'll have classes, that, a couple of classes going on all day Thursday, Friday. We hope to have some kind of special concert Saturday, I mean Friday. We uh, will have, we'll hope to have some kind of cool big guest on Saturday afternoon like we had last year. And then Sunday morning we'll kind of pack up and go. We'll probably have open mic nights almost every night that we're there. So what I really hope people who come to the camp this year would do is have a few tunes ready because probably Wednesday night we're going to pull a few people out of the woodwork and I know that some of the returning campers will be like we have no problem doing that. So, um, so that is the deal. That, that is so far the thing. And again, we'll have info on uh, signing up and registering and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully next week. Matt and I have been working on it. Well, Matt's working on it more. I'm just something kind of like in an advisory capacity there. So, okay, I should go out with a song. God, how many loud songs do I know? I have to Google. I don't have my thumb pick handy. Oh man, there we go. Now we got chainsaws happening. Okay, I think on that on that note, I'm gonna sign off. And maybe I'll make a little addendum to this news later and play something peaceful and quiet. But in the meantime, I will see you next week.